Have you heard about the call of Gideon? In this lesson, we will learn that when God calls us, he will be with us. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be part of our Sunday school? Then like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time I post a new video on our Sunday school lesson. You still have time to be a part of our Christmas study Bible giveaway. The rules are below in the description. Just follow the rules and you will be fine. Hi, I'm Regina Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. The Call of Gideon. Our devotional reading is 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 10. And our background scripture is Judges, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 27. Judges, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 6. Then it skips to Judges, the 6th chapter, the 7th verse of the 16a. And our key verse is Judges, the 6th chapter, and the 23rd verse. Lesson aims is one Describe the way Israel has been treated unfairly throughout history. Two, explain why Gideon was testing the angel to see if it was really an angel. And three, avoid false thinking about whether God is with us or not. Let's start with the prayer. O oh God, who warns and challenges, raise us up to be your hands and feet in your saving work. May our questions reflect direction as you remind us of your presence. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Introduction. Rather than being stuck at home and worrying about the coronavirus of 2020, Ted and Ellen decided to take action. Several families in the area were unemployed or underemployed due to the pandemic. So Ted and Ellen readily provided support to seven families by means of food, over a period of four weeks. Some of the food was from the donated food bank and some from Ted and Ellen's kitchen. This couple took initiative to do good for others. And that shows the importance of human connection. Food certainly matters, but it matters more that human beings maintain contact with each other. The Lord continues to work in the lives of those who ask for his deliverance even when they come as the result of dramatic conditions. We may not always notice the connections between the everyday stories in the Bible and large events that the Lord uses, but countless small stories of generosity and faith have occurred through the centuries as God has worked through the hands and feet of believers. This is Mark, the ninth chapter and the 41st verse in the 12th chapter and the 42nd verse. When people of faith answer God's call, the blessings of unexpected opportunity to serve follow. Lesson context. The book of Judges features accounts of series of leaders or judges who arose to rescue Israel from foreign oppression during the era of 1380 to 1050 BC. Now, these stories fit together to paint a picture of a dreary pattern. The Israelites sinned, God punished them, with foreign oppression, the Israelites repented, a deliverer came, and peace followed. The Midianites were desert people, descendants from Abraham's second wife, Keturah. This is found in Genesis, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 2. From this relationship came a nation that was always in conflict with Israel. Years earlier, the Israelites, while still wandering, in the wilderness, battled the Midianites and almost totally destroyed them. This is Numbers, the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 20. Because of their failure to completely destroy them, however, the tribe repopulated. Here, they were once again oppressing Israel. The Midianites, the oppressors whom Gideon was to confront in today's text, came from what is now northern Saudi Arabia or southeastern Jordan. They had created a sophisticated society based, based on trade across the Arabian Peninsula with the cultures around its perimeter, Egypt, Syria, Palestine, and Mesopotamia. Again, the 
Israelites hit rock bottom before turning back to God. How much suffering they could have avoided if they had trusted him. Turning to God shouldn't be a last resort. We should look to him for help each day. This isn't to say life will always be easy. There will be struggles, but God will give us the strength to live through them. Don't wait until you're at the end of your road. Call on God first in every situation. Our scriptures today are coming from Judges, the sixth chapter, verses one through two. Then it skips to Judges, the seventh chapter, verses 17 through 16a, verse one. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the median seven years. Their evil actions are the first part of the pattern of sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, that structure most of the book of Judges. The length of the suffering of the seven years is relatively short when compared to oppressions lasting eight years from the Cushan Ritathanium king of Mesopotamia. This is found in Judges, the third chapter, the eighth verse. Or the 18 years King Eglon of Moab was over them. This is Judges, the third chapter, verse 14. And also 18 years in the land of the Amorites, which is Judges, the 10th chapter, the eighth verse. And then you had the 20 years found in Judges, the fourth chapter, the third verse, and 40 years that the Philistines were over the children of Israel. And this was Judges, the 13th chapter and the first verse. Verse two, and the hand of Median prevailed against Israel. And because of the Medianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. The land of Israel featured large and small caves, both natural and man-made. When people felt vulnerable, they might flee to one of them for refuge. As humans, we do three things. We fight, flight, or freeze. The lesson now changes to verse 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. And the pattern of deliverance reflected in Israel begging God for help shared the same pattern as other texts in the Old Testament. Psalms 44 and Lamentations, the fifth chapter. Here, at least two authors complain with some degree of impatience and at the same time ask for aid. Verse 8. That the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. The unnamed prophet in the verse before us brings a word of challenge that will bring about the people's deliverance. Prophets were not all that unusual in the life of Israel. God had spoken through Moses regarding his will that the people listen to his prophet. This is Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, verse 14 to 22. God used both men and women. This is Exodus, the 15th chapter, the 20th verse, Judges, the 4th chapter, the 4th verse, and 2 Kings, the 22nd chapter, the 14th verse, to serve as prophets and declare his instructions for his people. This prophet's message is grounded in Israel's core story, the story of Exodus. The phrase house of bondage always shows up in stories about Israel's departure from Egypt. At the time of today's lesson, the Exodus was more than 250 years in the past. Many generations had come and gone. The Israelites were being mistreated by the Midianites. But the prophet was reminding the people of Israel of the one who had delivered their ancestors. Verse 9. And I delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. The deliverance had two parts, exodus and settlement. God's gift of the land, Exodus, the 23rd chapter, 31st verse, had made it possible for the people to enjoy their relationship with God in the rhythms of holy life. According to that prophet, God had moved out 
the pagan population in order to make possible the deliberate people to occupy their land. The Israelites ultimately began imitating the people they had replaced by worshiping idols that caused them to disobey God. Verse 10. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. The foundational story of the Exodus always should have pointed the Israelites toward loyalty to the Lord. His relocation of the Amorites to make room for the Israelites should have done so as well. Amorites are mentioned dozens of times in the Old Testament, along with numerous other ites whose lands were given to Israel. The Lord had showed that he could form and help establish Israel as a nation. So it was absurd to fear other gods. But for ancient people, worship was not about matters of pros and cons. It was about not accidentally leaving any gods unworshipped. Verse 11a. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat upon the oak, which was called Orphra. The second part of this story involves a different sort of messenger, a heavenly being who appears near a certain oak tree. Large trees, whether solitary or in a grove, were often used as landmarks and significant places for the people. They also served as shade and so places of rest and conversation for people who had worked all day and wanted a break. There are two biblical towns named Orpha. One was located in the tribal territory of Benjamin, about 12 miles north, north, northeast, of the city, later known as Jerusalem. Consideration here was in the tribal territory of Manasseh. Some students propose that the name is another designation of the town of Gilead, mentioned in Judges, the 10th chapter and 17th verse. But in any case, this is Orvra of the Abazirites, verse 11b, that pertained to Joash, Abazirite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide in, from the Midianites. This half verse reveals that the oak tree under which the heavenly messenger was sitting was on the property of Father Joash, which would pass to son Gideon. To be an Abzerite was to be of the tribe Manasseh. This tribe is from Joseph's son, Manasseh. For Gideon to be threshing wheat is a time indicator. The wheat harvest of this region occurs in the month of Sylvan, which is late May or early June. The wine presses won't be used for its intended purpose until the grapes ripen later in the summer months. Verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. The heavenly messenger greeted Gideon not on the basis of his past achievements, as far as we know, but on what he was to become, a mighty man of valor. The statement that the Lord is with thee occurs rarely in the Bible. Verse 13. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Gideon's cynical response reflects a sense of despair as he pointed out the gap between his then current experience and the age-old stories of deliverance. The reader knows that the Midianites' oppression was the due punishment brought on by Israel's sins. This is Judges 6, chapter the first verse. They brought it on themselves, just like we do. Did Gideon not realize this? Verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? 
Gideon's call to become the deliverer bears similarities to those of Moses. Exodus, the third chapter and the first verse through the fourth chapter and 17th verse and Joshua. The reference to this thy might seem strange. What so-called might did Gideon have? The text says nothing of his political intelligence or past military experience. His skills as a farmer might have prepared him for the physical rigors of warfare, but little else. Verse 15. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. Gideon objected to the call on the basis of insignificant lineage. A leader in antiquity needed family connections and alliances with other families. When Gideon pointed to his insignificance of his family, he was not simply being modest. He knew that political leaders needed a power base of connections. Verse 16a. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee. The explicit promise, I will be with thee, is the strongest assurance Gideon can receive. This promise is all the more striking, given the phrase rarity in the Old Testament. Conclusion. This text begins an account about how the Exodus by Israel came to be an apt story for commemorating deliveries from an oppression. It highlights the difference between the timeless tale of the Exodus and the way it's viewed today. God had formerly given, but he seemed less than keen to do so now. Much like numerous tales of the call to prophets or kings, the hero fit well here with the confusion the reader should also contain. And even through our experience and beliefs seems to contradict on occasion. Deep down, we may still feel the same way. When we do that, we can spend our lives in circles of thought as Gideon did. Therefore, it is important to note what is missing from Judges 6 chapter 14 verse. The Lord did not grant Gideon an answer for his why question in Judges 6 chapter 13 verse. The Lord do not answer to us. We are to answer to him. Our why question will not always be answered. Sometimes the Lord will only tell us what's next. Sometimes trouble will happen when we try to run ahead of the Lord, assuming we know what's next. Gideon also seems to have fallen into this trap later. Fortunately, Gideon was sensitive to God's will. He did not want to become king, convincing himself that God should rule Israel. Just like all of us, Gideon experienced both successes and failures. When he was called to act, he was clear in his opinion about how he felt, asking God to resolve his doubts from him. When Gideon could not receive further clarification from God, he demanded miraculous signs. It's been said that there are two ways to learn things, by wisdom and by experience. Wisdom is when we learn from the mistakes of others. And experience is when we learn from our own mistakes, or as old people say, bought sense. Gideon's life is being recorded so that we can learn from his successes and failures. Although his call is different from that of Christ's believers, Gideon's life still has much to teach. The Lord still calls us to serve. He still has emphasized that he abides with us. But are we with him? And I thought to remember, let God work through your faith. If you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up. Share this lesson. Get into our Christmas study Bible giveaway. Get your shots. Stay six feet apart. Love each other. And I will see you all next week.